In the event of a high-rise fire, whether the fire started in your home or somewhere else in the building, you'll have to make a series of decisions to help you and your loved ones survive. In this scenario, we're in a high-rise apartment building. This mirrors the actual building in which FSRI conducted research experiments to understand fire growth and spread. The building is 16 stories. Each floor has a single hallway with apartments on one side. There are exit stairwells on each end of the hallways and one in the middle. A fire starts in an apartment on the third floor. All of the bedrooms are in the back with the kitchen, dining room, and living room at the entrance. The fire starts here on the sofa in the living area. The source of the fire could be something small like a candle, cigarette, or lithium ion battery powered device like a smartphone. Picture yourself in this home. You're in this bedroom here with the door closed. I'm gonna show you some real world footage from our experiments so you can understand what the actual fire conditions are like. You can see the flames and smoke starting on the sofa here. After just 40 seconds, you can see the flames are growing. But what I really want to call out is the smoke, which is spreading across the ceiling and is beginning to fill the apartment from the top down. This isn't like smoke you've felt from a campfire or your grill. It's incredibly hot and filled with toxic gases. Smoke in an apartment fire is made up of dangerous chemicals like carbon monoxide. The longer the fire burns, the more toxic the smoke gets because the concentration, or parts per million of these gases, increase. If inhaled at only 400 parts per million, you'll start feeling the effects, causing headache and nausea. At 6,400 parts per million, you're dizzy and almost unconscious. It can get to the point where a single breath is dangerous to your life and health. The temperature of the smoke is just as dangerous. In our research, smoke reached temperatures of over 1,000 degrees. A few seconds of exposure can cause second and third degree burns on your skin and in your lungs. Back to the timeline. We're at 80 seconds now, and smoke has reached every room in the apartment except your bedroom with the closed door. Even a hollow core door acts as a protective barrier between you and the smoke and flames, buying you precious time in a home fire. Your reaction time is key here. Best case scenario, a smoke alarm in the living room will sound within 30 seconds. But research shows even after the alarm, most people are slow to act. Speed is paramount. Every second the fire and smoke are growing more deadly. Your normal exit route or plan A may be through the apartment door and down the hallway to the nearest stairwell. But that's through the living room where the smoke and fire have been building. At just three minutes after ignition, you can't see through the smoke. You could be experiencing temperatures over 1,000 degrees and lethal levels of toxic gases. So what do you do? What is your plan B to get out? What if you can't get out? Are there other people and pets? How are they getting out? If you think these are impossible questions to answer for the first time in the middle of a fire, you're right, they are. It's why you have to create your escape plan before a fire ever starts. Map out escape plans A, B, and C, and practice them with everyone in the home. Let's pull back and look at the rest of this floor. If you live in an apartment right here, best case scenario, your building has an interconnected alarm system, so you'll be alerted within seconds of the fire being detected. But we know from research, it takes people time to process and react after hearing the alarm. Just like when the fire started in your apartment, speed is critical for escape when a fire starts in another part of the building, especially if the door to the apartment with the fire was left open by people evacuating. From our research, we know that if a door is left open during an apartment fire, not only that unit, but the connecting hallway can reach temperatures as high as 1,000 degrees in just three minutes, hot enough to instantly cause second and third degree burns. In this case, Escape plan A is through the hallway and down the closest stairwell, but that's past the apartment where the fire started. Plan B is the other direction, down the second stairwell. If you can't see through the smoke in the hallway, it's plan C. Get behind a closed door as far away from the fire as possible, call the fire department, and let them know where you are. Let's pull back again. For everyone that lives above the fire floor, 
the stairwell is most likely where you have to make the first decision. If you're on floor 10, you'll hear the connected alarm. Move quickly down the clear hallway and enter the stairwell, which is your escape plan A. If you can see, you can proceed safely. But if a door was left open somewhere below, toxic smoke can move in quickly. Smoke is usually the most lethal component in a high-rise fire because of how fast it can spread and how little people understand about its impacts. Within minutes, the levels of toxic gas in the stairwell can become deadly. At this stage, it's vital you stop. Don't keep heading down into the smoke. You need to get out of the stairwell, close the door behind you, and go to your escape plan B, the second stairwell. If escape plan B is also blocked, Plan C is to get behind a closed door as far away from the fire as possible and shelter in place. Call the fire department and let them know where you are. Remember, fire moves fast. Plan ahead to save lives. Create and practice your escape plan. Everyone in the home needs to know their plans A, B, and C by heart. Make sure you have working smoke alarms or detectors properly installed on every level of the home including inside every sleeping room and outside every sleeping area. And don't forget, close before you doze. Get that protective barrier of a door between you and the smoke and flames.